Right, well, we have come out today on a rather miserable January day, and we have come to Old Duff Fisheries, which is a regular venue of mine, not too far from my home. And what we're going to do today is we're going to cover a few little edges uh, that I have with my bait when I'm targeting these winter snake lakes, winter commercials, basically any nice, delicate pole fishing, pole fishing situations in the winter where I need to be a little bit more refined and just a few little things regarding my bait that I choose or that I prepare my bait in a certain way that I feel gets me that one, two, maybe 10% advantage on everyone else just because my bait's either working or behaving or is a little bit more attractive to the fish. There's lots of little things you can do. So hopefully we're going to go over to the box and I'm going to cover several little tiny edges that I feel can make a difference for you that I've been keeping to myself for, for quite a few years. Right, well, first thing I want to talk about is something that's it's definitely come back to the fore for, for my personal fishing at the moment, is employing ground weight into my fishing. I'd, I'd definitely be the first one to say for a long, long time, probably the last three or four years, I am bothered. Whether it's been the, the venues that I've been fishing or just because I simply, I felt that they weren't too important. This is obviously just during the winter months, during December, January, February, when it's really, really cold. I, I didn't feel a need for them. I, I felt that they were causing problems and the fish weren't as attracted to them. Uh, and the fish were possibly a little bit harder to catch than when I was just feeding micros. Now, my me, me decision on that has completely changed altogether, simply because we're fishing for different fish. Uh, I've talked about it a few times in the past that I, I feel myself that F1s have almost changed. Uh, a lot of venues that I fish, you find that uh, the original strain of F1s, there's probably not as many of them left. There's still quite a, a lot, in fact, that a lot of venues, such as some of that, a lot of the old F1s present still, but there's a lot more newer F1s coming to the fore that we're fishing for that have been stocked in the last two, three, four, five years, that they definitely behave in a different way. And it's these smaller fish now that are becoming really important for me in my fishing that I need to, to stand out among anyone else and I need to be able to catch them fish because they're definitely proving a different beast than the original left ones. So for me, that's where ground bait's coming in again. It's definitely uh, helping me put a few more fish in the net. But my thinking behind it's as simple as this. Generally, I didn't normally go with my micros, just feeding, playing micros, that, that was my go-to. It keeps things nice and simple. I feed pretty much what I'm fishing on the hook. I'll fish either a micro or a tiny expander on the hook. The problem in doing so is the amount of bait you introduce. It's even when you feel that you're feeding no, nearly no micros, you're putting the tiniest little pinch of micro pellets into that cup that you're putting in, it's still a massive amount of numbers of your bait that the tiniest pinch of micros still contains 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, micro pellets, depending on how fat your fingers are. So without knowing, you're introducing a lot of numbers for them fish to eat, a lot of options for the fish to have, which can have a detrimental effect in them potentially picking your hook bait out. Obviously, I've talked about it a lot in the summer with hard pellet fishing, in that if you're feeding 10 hard pellets and fishing one on the hook, it's 10 to 1 for you to get a bite. It's no different with micro pellets, but on a much greater scale, because you're feeding so many pellets, plus you're feeding the fish up a lot quicker. So what ground bait, reverting back to ground bait now, is definitely letting me do, it's letting me feed more bait into my bag. And I've got a few little twists on ground bait that I've actually done myself in the past with different ground baits. But now since going to Spotted Fin, they've actually produced these ground baits for me, or they'd already produced them before I rocked up, that let me mess about with my ground baits. Or not mess about with them, they give me options in the ground baits doing different things just because of what they're made of and the consistency. They allow me to control what's happening in my peg and how the fish are behaving and hopefully just to make that peg last a little bit longer. So I'm just going to go through these ground baits one by one just to talk about why I use them and why I feel they make a difference for me. Right, so for me there's pretty much two ground baits I want to focus on. That is 100% grilled milled expander pellets and then the same 100% milled micro pellets which you might think there's no difference in them whatsoever but really really it's amazed me playing about with the two just how differently they both behave in the water and just on the day one can be a lot better than the other depending how them fish want to feed and sort of what fish are present. I find that skimmers prefer one, F1s prefer the other, carp can prefer the other one. It, it can be real mix and match but by having the two open to, you know, available to myself so I can mess about with both, it makes it much more versatile what I can feed in that peg depending on what I want to do. So firstly, I want to focus on my milled expander ground bait which when you open a bag of that, you'll find it is without doubt the most finely ground ground bait I've ever used. It's, 
It's on a part of maize meal that you put on your maggots. It's so fine and fluffy. I must admit, at first, I was a bit dubious of it. I looked and I thought, no, that's not quite right. Since playing with it, I've completely changed my mind. I think that it's phenomenal in being able to introduce an amount of bait into my peg. And because of its fine, uh, how finely it's been ground, it allows me to feed that bait and that bait pretty much disperses. As soon as it gets to the bottom, um, it'll sit on the bottom, but once a fish comes in, has one little suck or moves about around it, it disappears to nothing because it's so fine in the water. And you can see, so where I've, I've mixed this up just with plenty of water to make it nice and heavy, it, it's, it's like flour, it's ever so fine. It, it's almost like icing sugar when it first comes out of the bag. Really, really, really fine mix that's gonna go down, but not feed any fish. So I could potentially put some bait in every single cast to attract the fish, because I've got a little bit of uh, cloud in the water, a bit of smell in the water, a little bit of bait visibly on the bottom, but when it comes to them actually eating it, there's nothing there. They'll have one quick suck, the bait will have completely gone, which allows me to continue feeding every single cast, which I may need to attract fish into my peg, but at the same time, I don't spoil my peg by doing so. And hopefully, because my single expander or whatever hook bait I want to fish over the top of it is the only morsel of proper feed in the peg, potentially, it gets me a bite a lot quicker. So I'm expand the ground, that's probably my go-to. That's gonna be my first choice at this time of year when I really, really don't wanna spoil my bag. Moving on to the milled, milled micro uh, pellets, that's what it says on the tin, just milled down micro pellets, which are the micro pellets that Spotted Fin already do. What this creates is a much lighter mix than what the uh, expander pellets do. The expander's a little bit darker just because of the makeup of the pellet. The, um, micro pellets is a little bit lighter again just because of the color of the pellets when they're ground down what this has also been it's been milled to a much uh, coarser grade so it's a lot heavier when i mix it so i get much bigger particles which this will be my go-to if there's plenty of fish feeding there's lots of fish in my swim and i want a bit of bait to stay there on the bottom if i'm on a peg when i'm fishing for maybe lots of skimmers and um, lots of small stockies things like that where i'm going to get big numbers of fish in my peg then by introducing a bait that is actually gonna stay there, not quite on a par as micro pellets, they're gonna leave bits of bait all over the place, but this is gonna leave nice little lumps of, of ground down pellet in my swim and keep fish happy. But at the same time, it's not quite as um, unfilling as the expander pellet is, but it's not gonna feed the fish up as a micro pellet would. So it'll keep them in my peg nice and for, for a good length of time without spoiling things. Right, so with both my me, me mates options pretty much covered for, for this style of fishing, Lastly, I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm a big, I'm convinced on this subject yet, but definitely as, a, as an optional extra, um, I've been playing a little bit with some dark ground baits as well, simply because of the colour. Whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know. And if I'm honestly completely honest, um, I may find that the, the light colour can often be beneficial. I often think that fish come in and see it, but every venue's different, so it's worth playing about. So lastly, what I will have a little bit of a play with is some dark super blend. Yeah, it's not a ground bait I played with on its own much, so I wouldn't uh, use it necessarily as an individual ground bait, but just for colouring my ground baits to make them a little bit darker, I think it's definitely a little edge you can have. It's, whether it scares fish, I don't know, but it's been talked about over the years that definitely light ground baits can be a little bit, a bit controversial in the clearer water, so why not? Darkening it off is always an option, so just have a little play with that as well. That gives yourself even more versatility than the two mixers already have. Just by darkening it off could give you an optional extra on them harder days when you need to eke out a few more bites.